Hey, a review family. Keep it, I keep it tight. My name is Jay Morris, a review guy, and I'm back again to bring you another video. I hope you're having a very nice day. And today I'm going to be covering the brand new Abnormality album entitled Sociopathic Constructs. So this is the third studio length album by the American technical death metal band Abnormality. They were formed in 2005 and they are made up of some members from some past extreme metal acts. You can go look up the list. I might post it somewhere on the screen right here if you're interested. Go ahead. All right, that should be good enough. <laughs> Their 2012 album, Contaminating the Hive Mind, was an album that I'm kind of underwhelmed by. I went back and, since they had a short discography, checked out their previous material leading up to this review, and yeah, that album kind of underwhelmed me, but their 2016 album, Mechanisms of Omniscience, really did kind of blow me away. I really like the murky production on this. The mix was amazing. The vocals were monstrous. The playing had a very organic human feel to it. And it got me hyped for this new album and invigorated and like, I wonder what they're going to be able to do here. Considering this is their only third studio length album and they have been around since 2005. And I am very happy to say that this is one of the best technical death metal albums that I have heard in quite a while for a lot of the same reasons that I enjoyed their previous effort. The instrumentation has such an organic human feel to it. Although the drums can feel a little bit mechanical at times, a lot of times I feel like it's a human plane and that this is someone that is very proficient at their instrument of choice. The production still packs such a punch. I really do like how everything is mixed and EQ'd. Nothing really to complain about there. But the big thing is the vocals. The vocals are the thing that really just carries this album a lot of times when it comes to my personal interest because I will say, while this is a monstrous album, while this does pack a lot of a punch from an instrumental standpoint, this can feel a lot technical death metal 101 fringe line. Where while you can pick apart little details from these compositions and say, this is nice, this is nice, this riff is good, this drum plane's good, this solo's good, this vocal structure's good, it's the type of thing that as you listen through the entire thing and try to unravel it as one big product, it can get a little bit tedious on repeated listens. Maybe that's just for me because I listen to things multiple times for a review, but with repeated listens, it does wear a little bit thin. And a lot of the same things that at first I was like, that's really nice, kind of do wear a bit. The vocals have enough bestial quality to them and such monstrous ferocity that they could be on a Pissgrave album if they were just a little bit more twisted and pitch shifted and a little bit more gargly and watery. But they right now have the kind of qualities of like a malevolent creation kind of off their recent album, The 13th Beast, or specifically the Portal album, Ion. I'm even getting a cattle decapitation vibe a lot of times with some of these layered vocals, layered growls, layered screams and growls, shrieks being thrown in there all at once to this very cacophonous effect with the instrumentation. The vocals range from just normal deep guttural death metal growls to some brutal death metal growls, some black metal-esque shrieks. And when a lot of the times they layer them together in the production, it sounds like a hulking amalgamation that's coming to like rip everyone's head off. Monarch Alpha really does bring back some of those cattle decapitation vibes on that solo with the chuggy riffs and the nice beat to all hell drums that once again I will commend for being very organic on this track. The vocals are heavy and it's a really bustling way to start the album off. Technical death metal guitars freaking out in the backdrop all the while and if you play close attention they're very impressive and much like the drums have a very human feel to them. Penance starts very heavy, the vocals slide in very nicely, and it has more of those portal vibes coming through. And to be honest, this song reveals something that a lot of the sound does, and that is the thrash metal influence and inspiration that comes through. Transmogrification of the Echo Borgs, I, <laughs> I couldn't make these titles up. Starts very low tuned, I love how ominous it is as it opens up with the slowly chugging riffs with the drums and then it slides from ear to ear in kind of a build up thrash metal inspired feel and then it just goes full force. A catastrophic and catalyzing event is the type of track that I would not talk much about because it's kind of one of the lulls when it comes to, yeah, it's a rager, it's heavy to all hell, but it is a little bit one dimensional by the sound standards and by technical death metal standards and the only 
only reason it is a little bit more standout is because of the guitar solo, the freak out around the 3 minute and 30 second mark, which is a complete smackdown, very physical, very invigorating, and one of the best on the album, if not the best. A turnum is this dystopian spoken word kind of threnody layment that's right in the middle of the track listing. It's only 50 seconds. It's foreboding, pretty ominous, nice breather from all the heaviness. But then it falls right back into the heaviness straight away with the track Dying Breed, which I swear to God, the vocals on this album get more mortifying and disgusting as it progresses, and that's something you don't get very often. Through this kind of like dimly, dingy, dimly lit track, they get more gritty, they get more in your face, they get more just... This track also shows their ability to get a little bit slower, a little bit more chuggy, which they have done on previous tracks, but here it sounds almost kind of like classic thrash metal, classic death metal inspired. You can tell they're taking their cues a lot from a band such as Possess, such as Death. Curb Stomp, the ending track, is heavy from the get-go, and the instrumentation sometimes drowns out these vocals, which once again get even more mortifying on this track, in my opinion. They almost sound a little bit pitch-shifted and twisted and manipulated on this track, but I'm glad the instrumentation was able to take the wheel because it is a heavy ass mess on this track. I wish it stuck the landing a bit more because it just sounds like you could have put this track anywhere in this track listing and it would have made sense. I don't listen to this track and say, oh yeah, this is the ending, this is the curtain call, this is the fireworks show. And that kind of brings up one of my main issues with this album is how abrupt the songs start and end. A lot of times it just thrusts you right into the madness. Sometimes Sometimes you'll get a little bit of buildup, but usually it's just like straight on instrumentation, straight on vocals sometimes, and then the ending will just be like either like right at the end of a sentence, just no ending, no fade out, no, it just ends, next song begins, right back to back, and while that might give some people cohesion and a flow between the tracks, I really wish they would have done a bit more when it came to starting and ending a lot of these tracks. And like I said, as a whole project, it is sometimes hard to set some of these tracks side by side and say this is different than the other. It's mostly kind of the devil in the details, but the vocals, the nice songwriting, the nice solos, as well as the proficient instrumentation with that kind of human feel to it, sets this album apart from a lot of the technical death metal albums I hear every single year and kind to just pass by with my eyes glazed over. Yeah, definitely check this album out. I liked it a lot. I'm going to be giving it a 7 out of 10, and that is a wrap. Please stay for the end screen. I'll link some videos that you might be interested in. Be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. It'll help me out a lot. I upload regularly. Like this video if you enjoyed, and smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads, and I'll talk to you guys next time. But until then, my name is Jay Morse, you guy. You know who it is, and I'm signing off saying farewell.